The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Out of the backfield, exploding down the sideline. This is Hanging with the Boys, presented by Wingstop, where flavor gets its wings. Now, your hosts, Nate Newton, Kurt Daniels, Jesse Holly, and Shannon Gross. What is today? Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday, one o'clock, which is not our normal time. You're looking no, live at Tostitos day, Championship Plaza outside Ford Center here at the Star in a in a dreary Frisco, Texas, Ooh, where it is chilly. 39 degrees. It feels like 29. The high today is going to be 40, and the low tonight is going to be 20. And fellas, I hope you went and bought groceries and gasoline high, and huh? everything. Yep. Because it's snowmageddon around here the next two days. Mm. I don't know about other parts of the country, but We're Dallas shutting is shutting down. <laughs> We're not coming to the office tomorrow or we Friday. We didn't shut down for COVID long, but we let a cold down. come in here. The schools <laughs> are shut free. down. Like, we need let a man. freeze come in here, boy. We shut down. We need that Daniel Boone hat. <laughs> yeah. Are right, y'all yeah. up? Do what? Um, look at the screen. <laughs> Yo. Oh, hey, nice. Jesse. Oh, wow. You hanging off the roof today, Jesse? <laughs> it's Batman. <laughs> hey, Jesse, you there? Jesse? Wow, he froze upside down, too. What a disaster. No, no. I hope Bone's all right, no, man. All the no. blood go to Bone's head. <laughs> no. The funny thing is his eyes are moving. So he's uh, up. He's just not hearing us. <laughs> wow, man. How y'all going to dog Jesse like that? What a disaster this show is already. Somebody Technical deleted problems. Chris's opens. Yeah, no. Kurt didn't send any freaking I, notes I for the show. Jesse, on, you hear us? No? We, we didn't send no notes, Kurt? No. no we don't know what's going to go. Oh. Hold on a second. I got to call Jesse. I know one thing. No wonder I show stupid because the commanders are stupid. There you go. So I got a, <laughs> I got a couple. Of, it's better than the admirals, though, right? You good. know what, man? <laughs> These these cats don't make no sense, man. They, 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 they need to. St- wow, I ain't gonna even say what I was gonna say, and man. The, Commanders. And, and then Chris Beam showed me a picture, um, a, a little video of them sending out these little small cars filled with Commander gear hmm. that they're gonna pass out around the area. The people gonna throw that stuff back at that car. <laughs> Come on, man. You think? I don't like their uniforms. That I, W in the front there on that black. I don't Commanders, like. I don't man. like the uniforms. Mm-hmm. And all, with all the problems in the world, they can't bring no joy with anything they do. The Washington football team cannot bring well, any ad- joy. Let's admit it. We weren't gonna like anything they did, no matter what. So. Oh, they could have went back. I could have gave them a name better than that. I, I, I'm gonna think of a name better than that right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, do that next show. Bring us <laughs> right. your name for the Washington football Washington team. Boons. Daniel Boons. Daniel Boons. <laughs> <laughs> You had on your day, you boon outfit. Making up fun of hey, so how did you go up there and curse the whole team, wow, Shannon? Yeah, explain that. I need to stay away from if you <laughs> if you want to win the Super Bowl and you're a fan of either team, send me up there on your beh- on, on your opponent's behalf. <laughs> because I will jinx the hell out of them. Explain I don't know. what you did. So I got a I got an invite last week to uh, a good friend of mine. I actually used to work for the Cowboys cheerleaders here. Um her family has a suite in Kansas City. Right. And she invited me up to go to the game. And I was like, well, I've been here 18 years. I hadn't been to a division championship game. Might as well go experience that. So I flew up on Saturday and uh, went and ate some ate some good Kansas City food. Went, mm-hmm. Got there early, went to the uh, went to the game. We were in a suite. It was on the front row of the suite there. The mm-hmm. windows come up so you could just experience the cold air and the noise and yeah. – Everything was looking great at halftime. Yeah. And, I, you know, it's weird because I was like, I don't really have a dog in this fight. I want to see Joe Burrow win because he went to LSU hey, and Joe I'm from cool, Louisiana. Joe, Joe cool. cool. But then I was there on behalf of some people that are Chiefs. They're actually Cowboys fans, but they are they live in Kansas City. Yeah, so, right. so they root for Kansas City. I was like, so I'm going to root for Kansas City just because I'm there and they're sweet and everything. And I was like, I'm probably not going to get that excited. I'm just happy to be around football. I got excited, man. <laughs> right, right. I got right. nervous. I was Pulled like into it, huh? on the end of, edge of my seat, like I was cheering, I was screaming and yelling, and then, man, they just ripped my heart out there at it the end. And I sat there and I was like, 
I cannot believe they lost this game. Yeah. And so you didn't sit right? there at any point saying, I just brought Cowboy to Kansas City. I didn't. Because <laughs> you said that for about how many football games for the Cowboy? I can't um, believe it's just happened. <laughs> well, you know, so here's the interesting thing. We were talking about this in the car on the ride up there. They were asking me what I thought about Coach McCarthy. And I said, I like Coach McCarthy. Yeah. Like, you know, the, yeah. the big thing, you know, I like – what he did for the locker room, getting a bunch of new guys, a bunch of big personalities on the same page. He, he's changing the culture. I said, I really like what he's doing. The big knock on him has been game management, clock management, and all that. I said, but, you know, that's in Dallas. I would, I would, all, I would bet you that in 30 other NFL cities, they have the exact same conversation that yeah. we have, with the exception of Belichick and maybe, you know, maybe a Sean Payton. But right, I, right. that happens too. Every every coach is going to get criticized for moves he makes during the game, and, and sure enough, two big coaching mistakes in that game. That one one you probably put on Patrick Mahomes for that play and running too much time off yeah. the clock. But then that that one play where he called timeout and then challenged the play that that technically could have cost them the game. Yeah. So it's like the the problems that you have here in Dallas, every other team has them. It's yeah. just that's your team. You watch them week in and week out, and you realize everybody's going through the same growing pains and the same problems that we have. We've just been doing it for so long. It's like, okay, here's another coach. Here's <laughs> yeah. another one that's doing this. But, I mean, everybody's got th- yeah. got. Pro- I mean, look at what Sean McVay did, one of the – most brilliant coaches in the game, and he had a hard time calling games, yeah. you know, this so. weekend. So, but it was fun. It was a good trip. I hate that they lost, but it was a, it was a great experience. I wish they would have won so I could have seen the trophy presentation and all that. Yeah. Because I didn't stick around for it. I went and sat in the back of the suite year. and drank the rest. Jesse's of the up right now, Shannon. You Jesse, you're right side up. Can you hear us? <laughs> I got you guys, y'all. I'm here. Yay! Right. We so we you. we all done something this week. Good. You know, I, and I was in the presentation of the commanders, and uh, what you did good this week. Hung <laughs> out with you guys. All right. Okay. So, what did you do good this week, Jess? Um, I, I just came back from a, not, uh, a missions trip. I was in Cartagena, Colombia, uh, with a group called Bridges of Hope, and we were. Uh, it was a, it was a medical and athletic, believe it or not. Um, missions trip and so don't go rob his house because he's he's officially (laughs) back vision you know a a dental medical vision and then i'm setting up a sports clinic in columbia uh so we're we're just trying to do some great things and if i can i do want to give a small shout out uh to my group that i was with and 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 i'll start from the top and i'll, I'll breeze through this but bridges of hope was a group that i've with the president is janet mickle uh and her husband uh dave mickle but um i had uh doug and mark and joe lee and hunter and kathy and debbie and uh uh miss angela and 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 uh kj katie jones I hope I'm not missing anybody. Who Kurt, you forgot happy. Kurt. Bones. Uh, our our group. Now Bones didn't make the trip. <laughs> that, that was my crew. I had a fantastic crew. Uh, we 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 got a lot. We got a lot done. We did some amazing things, and there are some amazing peoples, and I, and I made some great relationships. Uh, a lot of them living in, most of them live in Indiana. So uh, shout out to my, my 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 peoples from Bridges of Hope, and to the gang, doctors, dentists, physical therapists, uh, 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 um, mental uh, uh, mental welfare, and just all types of stuff. Man, we had a great time. Blessed a lot of people. And we were blessed in the process. Jesse, did you get to tour any of the trailer parks there? I need <laughs> to know what what. That that he part of the trip looks today. like. <laughs> I'll text you. <laughs> <laughs> Pictures or it didn't happen. Mm. <laughs> How about this? <laughs> By the way, um, now you you 
you trying to you trying to set me up? You trying to set like like the NFL coaches? I I text you something or I send you a picture or something, and all of a sudden now you're looking like, oh, look at Jesse, he's he's colluding, and now you're trying to put me in the same vein with the rest of the people. You know, you guys supposed to be my brothers, man, but you're always trying to set me up for failure. No, that's Nate that shows all your text messages off. I I don't do that. It's in confidentiality <laughs> when you send things. Man, let me tell you something. Just make sure you text. What's the recently right happening in the NFL? Yeah. I have stopped with the text. Believe that. <laughs> yeah. Don't send me none. It ain't sending you. No, for real. <laughs> hey, by the way, we will have later on in the show our Cowboys super fan that's up for the Ford Hall of Fans uh, voting. His name is Miguel Castellanos, who will be on the last segment. You've probably seen him at the games. He's the guy that wears the the uh, luchador mask all the time and the cape. No Che Libre. Super mm-hmm. Cowboy is nice. what he goes by. So he'll be on at the end of the show. So there you cool. go. Very nice. So, Jess, it was, it was a good trip. You made, you made it back okay, huh? Yeah, they didn't stop me at custom for some powdery white substance, so I'm good. Okay, well that is that is good. What do you think about uh, the the? You know what? Let, let's talk about the Super Bowl matchup. What do you guys think, Nate? What, what do you think? Those are the teams you wanted in it or no? The Cowboys. Who, well, first of all, who playing in the Super Bowl? Hmm. Rams and Bengals. Mm-hmm. Um, Bengals. You know what? The Rams got more homeboys in the Dallas okay. area. Okay. It, 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 and and uh, okay, Nate McCarthy. I, you don't you don't watch the playoffs. No, I know. I've been watching them. <laughs> I've been watching what other quarterbacks have been doing. What do you think about about Cincinnati with their beat up <laughs> offensive line? And I thought you would never ask. <laughs> <laughs> Why did that quarterback run? The week before he got sacked nine times. This week here, he said, "You know what." I'm gonna let, I'm not gonna let my cards collapse around me. I'm not gonna fold every time my cards collapse. I'm gonna take off and run, and then I may throw the ball. But you know what? I'm gonna get a, a, a few key first downs to help my team win. I want my old Dak back. Mm. I want my rookie Dak back. Come on, Callum, talk to him. I'm, that's what I think about the Super Bowl. I'm going with Joe Cool. Are you? Are you? He got less talent around him. Uh, not at receiver, but I'm saying less talent for his offensive line. I think uh, the Rams have a better personnel personnel field unit, but I'm going with Joe Cool, baby. You know, I'm su- I'm kind of surprised he's doing this well in the NFL. I thought, you know, he really only had one really good college year. Yeah. He was surrounded by, you know, ghouls you know, of you know, talent. Yeah, I thought, well, when he gets the pros, he, you know, whatever. But man, he's <laughs> Joe Cool, baby. He's, he is Joe Cool. Tearing it up. You think, you, I remember. Uh, uh, he did an interview a week or two ago, and he said, "He said, you know, I'm here for something bigger than this game we just played when they won that first mm-hmm. playoff game. He said, I'm here for something bigger. And, and you know, I'm like, I heard, I, I hear this a lot. I, we're here for something bigger. He said, my offensive line is getting better, and I'm going to help. And he just talked about the things he needed to do to help his offensive line. And I see it, it, when I see that, and then I see it come true. I gotta ride with this kid now, because he understands what's going on. He understands he probably had a better college offensive line than he have now. Ooh. But he ain't letting that he ain't letting that detour him. He doing whatever it takes to win, and I I like that. What do you think about the matchup, Kurt? <clears throat> you like those two teams in it? Yeah. I, I, well, you know, I don't care one way. I think. Joe Burrow is fun to watch, but otherwise yeah. I don't have much to say about Cincinnati. The Rams, I think the Rams are going to be tough. They have a better team. Yeah, they're yeah. Better they are team. a better team. And their quarterback has been uh, hunting this for years. You know, he's a hometown boy. He yeah. went to Georgia. I've been watching this kid, and, you know, and, I, and, and, and he's got great parents. So I, I want success for him. Yeah, I want to see Stafford win. Yeah, but, man, Joe Cool, bro. What about you, Jess? You like the matchup? He went off our screen. They, uh, they no, nah, not really. No, I, I don't. I don't. For me, particularly, I don't. I don't like the matchup. I think the NFL is looking at this matchup and saying we're about to lose a ton of money because there, there are there isn't really any storylines in this. You know, when you have a Tom Brady or an Aaron Rodgers or you know a, a certain team, like while Cincinnati, they have a, a decent home base of fans. They they're not a they're not a popular brand you know, across the National Football League. So if you're a casual fan, you're not picking up watching the 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 Cincinnati Cincinnati Bengals. And we all know we we've all traveled and been a part of games in LA and with the Rams. Like are there really true Rams fans in LA? 
like we know a lot of it's going to be uh, uh, it's kind of similar to how we are. I think we have a better fan base, of course, but it's a lot of let's just show up to the popular place to be. And right now that's the football game because it's on Sunday night or Monday night football and it's prime time. I, the, I mean, I, I hope the game is is an interesting game. I don't think it's going to be. I think this Super Bowl will be a dud. It's going to be a, a Rams blowout for the very reason that you guys were talking about. I just think when you got Von Miller, Aaron Donald, and the rest of that crew up front, that they're going to get after that quarterback like nobody's business. And and, and Joe Cool will be really cool until he got to deal with a bad dude in Aaron Donald. And Ooh, was, I like that. Like, Way to go, man. Jesse. That, that offensive line. He went over to the Cumbalinos and got, got, got hilped. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, man. I, I'm just, I'm just looking at the matchups, and I'm just like, I, I saw what happened to you, you know, a little while ago, and, and and while you may have been able to run against Kansas City, it's gonna be a different monster when you got to deal with that man child and I mean that that man monster beast and Aaron Donald and Von Miller's been there before, he's won it before, he's hungry for it, uh, and, and and that crew is going to just be dialed back, ready to get out to the quarterback. There was a guy, there were a couple of. Uh, Bengals fans in front of the right in mm-hmm. front of the suite, you know, and the window was right there. And there was a guy, he was going around, he was a Kansas City fan, and he was dapping them all up. He said, Look, if you don't love, if you can't get down with Kansas, with uh, Cincinnati fans, you don't love football because you know there ain't no bandwagon Cincinnati fans. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. So thank y'all for coming. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't. The Rams are the better team, but how many times have we sat here in 18, 20 weeks saying this was the better team? Yeah, yeah, too many times. Yeah, man, I, and I, and I and I I love defense. Y'all know how I crave defense, and and the Ram has it, but do not count you Cincinnati know what? defense that, out. That very reason has kind of turned me. I'm not gonna say turn me off from football, but over the last several years. Used to, it felt like there was some romantic, some romanticism in football. The mm-hmm. best team would win the Super Bowl. Right, right. It's not that way anymore. It's the team that gets hot at the right time. That's and, healthy. And it's healthy. Yeah. That, that has a good, a good flawless game and a good game plan. And I feel like maybe I was just naive earlier in my life, but I feel like now – the like the romanticism's gone. Like it's not always the best team that wins, and no one looks back and goes, "Oh yeah, but that was a better team that didn't win." This team got in a in a sense kind of lucky that they won, and it's like I just a part of me is like, you want the best team hmm. to win, right? And it's that's not the way. That but you it know works. why that is? Why? And I hope I pronounced the word right. The physicality of the game is gone. There's no fear factor. Like, just think if these guys played the way my guys played, then what Jesse's saying by Aaron Donald and, and oh, Von Miller. It blow them out. <laughs> Shut them down. It right? would sure enough be yeah. something ugly happening. But now, you know, if you one step too late, we can get you, we, 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 we can get 15, 20 yards. You know, pl- plus the twenty yard completion. Hmm. So when you took the the physical part of the game out, the, the the that that means a lot. That means the better team has a chance. The the the, the second best team has a chance if their scheme is right. Yeah. If you got a good scheme and a quarterback that can work yeah, it, and I, yeah. But but Nate, the physicality is still there up front. Aaron yeah, Donald is. can still dominate a center, dominate a guard, he dominate can. a tackle. That part hadn't changed. And so you can sack so him nine I, times and still it, lose. You know, I'm saying mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that okay. You're right. <laughs> I'm just saying I, I'm agreeing with you, Jesse. Yeah. I, I'm agreeing. The Rams are the better team. They yeah. from man to man, they have sold out for this one moment. Could you say though that the because there's less physicality, the game has improved because there's more Oh yeah, it's more it's more scheming, scheming and more flying around. It, you know, you get a chance. You know, you can have you can be a one year wonder. You know, as an offense or defensive coordinator, and you know, have your head coaching job the next year because of that. But the thing not if you're black. I knew that was coming from you. Mm-hmm. I knew. <laughs> Sorry, it was I shouldn't have said that. Yeah. Sorry. It's the truth, sorry, but sorry, we're going to move Black on. Happy Black History Month, fellas. It's true. <laughs> Happy Black History Month, Jesse. But uh, I'm gonna tell you something. When you when you look at that's what got. The 49ers into the to the second round because they were physical, they were tough. 
But when 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 they met a team with the same amount of physicalness, they lost because the talent was better. Aaron Rodgers, I mean, excuse me, Aaron Donald pulled them together. You saw it doing this. Like, man, come on, man. Not We ain't even let them beat us for the umpteenth time. In a row, we are the better team. Let's get physical. That's what I thought we would do a few weeks ago. Get physical one time? We we couldn't even do that. I, I hate it. And I, now, now we got the Washington commander. Oh, let's Love. take our first break. Jesse, <laughs> come you going to be able to hang out? <laughs> Jesse, yes, you still in you still in Colombia, all them trees around you. You sure you're back? Nate, focus on the words that are coming out of my mouth, not the stuff that's happening behind me. All right. All right, Jesse. We'll yeah, that's the problem. We focus on the words coming out of your mouth, get us all fired. Uh, you good. We'll be back. We'll take our first break. We'll I'm be gonna right need some back. chicken. I'm gonna need some chicken. Oh, some more. Hang it with the boys. Hey, Cowboys fans, ready to spice up your next watch party? Bring Yokiero guacamole and be the game day hero. Yokiero means I want, and we know you want, great, fresh-tasting, ready-to-serve guacamole for your home-gating and tailgating events. Made with real avocados and the perfect blend of spices, it will be the star of any party. You can find us at your local Albertsons or Tom Thumb in the deli section. If you can't find it, talk to your store manager and tell them, Yokiero, Yokiero guacamole. Brace yourself for an existential question. Has your butt been having enough fun lately? Have you been treating it well? Has it been going places? If not, then it's about time you start using SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the best way to get your butt tickets to live events. Just ask the thousands of other butts who have rated it the number one ticketing app. So what are you waiting for? Download the app now or visit SeatGeek.com to get tickets to sports, concerts, and live events and make your butt happy. SeatGeek. Get your seat in a seat. It's game day. You know what that means. First, kebab prep. Steak, pepper, onion, steak, pepper, onion. Next, a counterclockwise lap around the room. Now, the lucky grease-stained jersey goes on. And lastly, the dance. You know the one. This is a game day ritual no matter where you are. Whether you're traveling to the game or watching from your favorite vacation spot, book a place to stay on Hotels.com and keep the tradition alive and well. Hotels.com. Proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. At AT AT&T, everyone, new and existing customers, get our best deals on every smartphone. Why? Because you deserve it. For turning your living room into your office and your gym. For teaching grandma how to video call. And teaching her again. It's the button on your left, Nana. Okay, your other left. It's not complicated. Everyone deserves something new. So AT&T has given everyone new and existing customers our best deals with every unlimited plan on every smartphone, even the latest ones. AT&T may temporarily slow data speeds if the network is busy. Restrictions and exceptions may apply. Back to Hanging with the Boys. Welcome back to the show, Wing Stop, where flavor gets its wings. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and knock this one out, too. WrestleMania, your favorite WWE superstar. Oh, Wing Stop is back, baby! What you mean back? They never left. Well, we ain't had none. <laughs> we, we, we. we ain't talk about... We, we ain't had none. Uh, I ain't heard you talk about them in a while. We I ain't know. had none. I got to I gotta try to make that happen soon. Mm-hmm. Uh, WWE Superstars return to AT&T Stadium for WrestleMania on Saturday, April the 2nd, and Sunday, April the 3rd. Get your tickets to the most stupendous two-night WrestleMania in history. Visit SeatGeek.com, the official ticketing provider of AT&T Stadium. Kurt. Yes, sir. What does stupendous mean? Great or wonderful or really. Well, why stupid is in it? I don't know. It's a great question. Great question. Uh, When you first said I said, you know, I better go look that up, but I keep forgetting. Mm. Stupendous. I'm like, what? Stupendous. In this. All right. Kurt, Thank you, Kurt. What do you want to talk about since you're bailing on the show or later? Bailing this, on later. the show. Wow, man. He sold you out. Yeah. He, Nate Newton you. Nate Newton you. Yeah. <laughs> what do you have going on so important that you didn't send out, are, you didn't send out a run sheet? You're making me actually work had for to do, We're doing interviews for upcoming Deep Blue documentaries. We had one this morning. Oh, who'd you Saturday. interview? Uh, Rick Goslin, who's the. We're doing a piece on the 1991 season. Nate, I may come calling. And so um, we talked to him. He was a beat writer for the morning news back then. So. Didn't Rick say something positive about the Cowboys? He did. He thought he said that was a fun team to cover. No, I'm talking about these modern-day Cowboys. Didn't oh, he? yeah, he probably had something positive to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, uh, probably had some. No, he did. He did. He did. He had, we we talked a little about a little bit about the current Cowboys and Dak and all that. He's very interesting. Very knowledgeable. Mm. We, we got Kyle. 
and I, I'll get he just we discussed should McCarthy be calling plays? Ooh, and I was going to ask you guys that. Yes, I, I, yes, I, I ain't backing up off of that. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. yes. <laughs> I think I'm in the yes camp now, too. <laughs> I well, think. I mean, this, he's such, he's, everybody's with Sean Payton supposedly looking over his shoulder. You would think McCarthy would want to, but I don't know. Why wouldn't you? If you're, if you're a head coach and you're an offensive-minded coach and you've got a quarterback that we've seen greatness from, flashes of greatness, why would you not want to take play calling in your hands? I just, <clears throat> uh, man, when you have three or four players that I think is special, and I think one is elite, and they're not at the top of your team or the top of the league and what they do, that's sad. It's a miss. That's that. that we, I don't care. We, and Jesse, I want to thank Jesse, man, because I used to try to dog Amari, and then he stopped, Nate, stopped with just the fandom. Look at this kid, what he brings. And what Amari brings to this team, man, is an elite athlete that can do all things at his position. And we did not take advantage of that. You have an elite guy in, in C.D. Lamb that – his special, if you just quick as you can get him the ball, as great as he can be. These dudes did not play a role in the playoff game. They did not play a role in the last two or three games of the year. Whether you like Zeke or not is not the issue. You you slam him up in there. You you find a way. And this and this kid is a mismatch in Tony Pollard. He, th- those are the four guys I'm talking about. They are mismatch. He, this kid, if he was on any other team, would be special. We couldn't even find him hmm. the last two games of the year. How do you do that as an offensive coordinator? And you know, you can say what you want about the offensive line. I listened to Derek Eagleton earlier, and he was so spot on because our offensive line got beat to sleep in the playoff game. He was so spot on, and he said that's one of his most surprising things of – you know, what went wrong. But I also want to say that is the job of Coach Philman, who did a great job last year, the year before, of holding this thing together. Didn't do such a great job in our last six games of the year of holding this thing together and yeah. designing plays and putting our offensive line in some type of advantage situation at some moments. Not all moments because they were better than us defensively than we were offensively, but in some moments to give the quarterback a chance. You can't do that. You can't do that as an offensive coordinator, uh, offensive line coach, you know, and not and not your head coach. He, Your head coach got to be, every time he turned the film, that got to be in his mind. How, did, how does the <clears throat> offensive line coach affect – the play calling does it like when a play is being designed? Does he say, "Okay, I think we should block this alignment"? I mean, how does he? What's his role in that? What he does is he'll come in and he, and he'll get with the offensive coordinator, and the offensive coordinator will give him a, a, a overview of what he's thinking, and if he got any new plays, what protection versus run or pass, what protections fit it best, you know, who can do this and what can and who can do that. But what as what? But what an offensive line coach mostly do is he helped put in the run plays. Hmm. And, you know, Tony Wise used to do it for us, Hudson Hawk. But then, you know, the, but, uh, the offensive coordinators got to call the plays the majority of the time. So they said, well, we don't want them to lose confidence. Well, you ain't going to lose confidence. He ain't going to lose confidence because you ain't going to lose confidence. You're going to stand on the table for us. You see we getting drove back, beat to death, and, and the only thing we got left is the ability to fight back, and that's going forward. A lot of coaches will tell you you can be physical in pass blocking, but you can only be physical in pass blocking if you've gotten after a guy, if you can fill a guy. But if, if you rushing me and I can't touch you, how do, I, how do I feel you? And so that's what happened in this playoff game. Is our offensive line, at one point, it, it's like Connor didn't even know how to set up no more. When you lose your integrity as an offensive lineman, where you got a guy right in front of you, but you don't even know 
how to play him because you don't know what he's finna do to you because you've dictated nothing on him. You've not laid hands on him. You've not mentally got on him. You can jab him or punch him. Now you just sitting there oh, like a like a weeble wobble, but you gonna fall down. And that's what happened to this young man. That that right there is partly the coach's fault too. <laughs> yeah, that mm-hmm. man, that ain't does, just does, a takeover, man. Does Philbin need should he be getting criticized more? Yes, he this? should. Because of this, I mean, you had Connor Williams in, and now you had rotating tackles and this and that. I mean, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and that's why I got Kyle Yeomans down there at the Senior Bowl looking for me a guard and a center. And you know what? If I'm still on this show going forward in these years to come or these months to come, we need a guard, a center, and a blocking tight end. We, you can jump the tight ends. It's rare that a tight end can win you a game. You know, that dude in Kansas City can do it. The old guy uh, at uh, at uh, New England, when he was, now he's with Tampa, he used to could do it. Ain't too many tight ends can win and dominate games. So what you need to do is find you a blocking tight end that can catch so you can have a dual threat and we can set this edge for Tony Pollard and we can get Zeke right at the tackles and get him going back upfield. It, it, it's obvious what we need. And we need for Dak to turn back into rookie Dak. And then we'll, then we'll be back 12 wins, and we'll make it to the second round of the playoffs. And, oh, yeah, I'm still looking for somebody to stop the run in the middle of our defense. Go ahead, Jesse. You know, I, I, I listened to Nate, and I listened to some of the question that Kurt was asking, and I, and I, I find myself just – so confused and the, and the question i have is is there some sort of spell some some negative spell that's on us that we just can't get it right we'll have a dominant offense defense can't do nothing we have a dominant defense offense can't do nothing we didn't been through coaches and coordinators and assistant coaches and, and we and 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 man for man we're not the Jaguars, okay? We're not the Dolphins. Man, our <laughs> rosters are pretty much always loaded. And it's just mind-blowing to – like, I don't know what we need. Like, I don't know, honestly. I don't know what we have to do to fix this. Because it's – it's it's we've, we've had superior coaches. We've had superior coordinators. We've had superior talent, but in 26 years, it has not resulted in anything but frustration and early eliminations. And so I, 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 I just, I'm, 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 I'm baffled at where to go or, or, or what to do because we keep saying we need this, we need that, we need this. We had the best offensive line in football for a good two to four year run. When we had Travis Frederick, Zach Martin, Lyle Collins, you know, you even had – you could throw Doug Free in there and, and put whoever else you want in there, but that was one of the most dominant offensive lines in the National Football League. We had rushing champions. We had 4,000-yard quarterbacks. We had two 3,000-yard receivers. We've had all those. We've had all of those. With no we, defense. We, we've had now a stud – we, this year we had a stud linebacker who we found out can also be a dominant defensive uh a defensive edge ru- edge rusher. We've had good edge rushers. We had a guy who damn near had a thousand interceptions in a season. I, getting still, what did it result in? Nothing but fr- frustration and early elimination. I, I don't know. I, I played on teams that had dominant players on them: Jay Ratliff, Demarcus Ware. Brady Jane, I, I played on those teams. I played with good quarterbacks, Tony Romo. I played with, with, with tight ends and Des Bryant in his prime and Roy Williams. I, I played with them. Before that, we've you know, you, there was T.O. and but yet still and Bill Parcells and still frustration, early elimination. I, I just I, we, I'm seeing all these other teams ascend, right? I see Bengals. You know, I, I see what the what what, what Joe Burrow. And, and 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 that squad is doing with the Bengals. I, I see how you know Tom Brady went to Tampa in one year, turned that team around. They went, they wouldn't won a damn Super Bowl. 
They went and won a Super Bowl in one year. Uh, uh, you see, you see the teams all across the league. Physical. You know, Andy Reid, he turned around Kansas City, made, made them, made them uh, uh, now the standard of football in the National Football League. You see what what was happening in L.A. with the Chargers, what's happening in L.A. with the Rams. Honestly, the the, the San Francisco 49ers are only a a, a, a decent quarterback away. They're they're above average. I don't even think Jimmy G is above average. They're, they they get a quarterback that can actually win them some football games, win them a game or two of this year. They'll find themselves back in another situation. Who knows where Aaron Rodgers will end up at? But I just see all these other franchises being able to come in and turn their programs around with far less than what we have, physical, and and, and, and been able to do more with far less than what we have. And so it frustrates me because I'm saying. We 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 have we have the best facilities. We have the best stadium. We have we have everything that you want, but yet and still it, we can never put the to the, the total thing together, offense, defense, coaching, court, whatever it may be. We just can't see, and, and we've wasted from the Jason Garrett into the Jason Garrett era to the beginning of the Mike McCarthy era. I don't know how much longer Mike McCarthy has. I, I, I do truly believe that he had, he's a, he's a dead man walking. And the only thing that would be able to save his life is a Super Bowl with, with, with Kellen Moore looming. And if Dan Quinn hasn't, it, it, they, they, we, we haven't talked about this, but I really do feel that there was conversations in this whole Dan Quinn negotiation thing that if Mike McCarthy couldn't get things done, that Dan Quinn would be a serious candidate to get a head coaching job right here in Dallas in a year or so. And so he he has to perform. He has to perform this year, and they have to do something. But we've wasted years. Dak is going into his seventh year. We saw Zeke. Zeke, I don't know if Zeke will ever get back to the Zeke that we saw who was able to break 20, 30, 40, 50-yard runs from screen plays or whatever. Uh, you know, Amari Cooper gets another year older. Tyron Smith is just about done. You know, we, we don't have an offensive line. Lyle Collins still hasn't, I don't believe, truly recovered from that hip injury. You saw the way he played towards the end of the year. Really high. There was no bend, no athleticism in, Ty, in, 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 in Lyle Collins. Who knows how much longer Zach Martin will play? He's still a dominant guard, but he may not play much longer. So you have all these determining factors that are happening. Oh, by the way, you also got to pay folks too. We got 21 free agents. So always trying to trying to build this team. We're, we're missing these windows. We're missing these prime windows of these prime athletes. And we'll be finding ourselves trying to rebuild again if you fire the head coach in another year, if your coordinators are not there, or you know, when you hire a new guy, then everything changes. It's just it's just one of those things where it leaves me it leaves me baffled because I don't know what we have to do to truly put ourselves in a position to be in the conversation come mid February. Hmm. We we get there in August. It's always oh, but these Cowboys if they can, if they can get X Y and Z together they'll be they'll be playing late in the season and then we'll have moments throughout the season they're like oh this Cowboys are the dominant football team but every single time half, more than half of my life when we get to the February part of talking about things Cowboys names aren't in that conversation. Speaking of Dan Quinn, when every other show all across the country was saying he's gone mm -hmm. he's gone there was one show. One person that said he show. might, he might just stay around. He might just be here. I don't know what show that was or who yeah. said that, but it wasn't. Sure as hell wasn't Jesse because Jesse was like, he, "There's no way he's wasn't gone. Me either. I he's gone." Yep. I tell you, Ray, I'm so happy this man stayed. <laughs> is the season a success now? Uh, yes, it is for me. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm gonna tell y'all something. I had us dead in the water. Y'all know that at mm -hmm. the beginning of the year because of our defense. And I thought we would just barely make the playoffs because we was in a, a, a not-so-strong division. But I'm telling you, I mean conference, but I'm telling you, he got to pull another rabbit out of his hat out of all these defensive players that they got to choose to try to keep yeah. if they can and then go out and find some fresh ones. He he got to have another another great year. And uh, it's one thing that's missing, Jess, out of all of that you said is – both teams, both sides of the ball, special teams included, physical. Mm -hmm. We can't ever forget that that's what we haven't had on both sides of the ball and special teams at the same time. We have never been, had a physical team in a lot of years. 
we're not physical. I thought you had it this year, <clears throat> and then I thought we could get it up one game. Yeah. One one game. No, one so we, game. We, had, we 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 had we had some physical players. Yeah. And when I say players, I mean a very. I mean I mean I mean less than five. Right. Right. But we weren't a physical team. That, that that's a difference. F- being a physical a team, team is a is yeah. a is a uh, a mentality. It's a it's a it's a way about you as a whole. The totality of the team is a physical brand of football. We had a guy or two or three who played physically. That don't make you a physical team. For the right. most part, we have always been finesse. It's always it's always been about the glitz and glam and and and, and the show. We we ain't we ain't got no real junkyard dogs. We we don't have no dude that's going that's going you know bite the skin off your arm and spit it out and you know be ready to go again. We don't we don't we don't we don't have a team mindset like that. that who's going to just say we're going to just beat the hell out of you for four Indeed. quarters? And if you stand up at the end of the game, then then cool beans. But if not, then we're going to win this game. We we don't we don't have that. We we have the like I said a, a player or two, but we're we're finesse. I tell you what else I. What else I realized at that game is no matter how – and this is another thing that made me frustrated as a Cowboys fan. No matter how good you are, Kansas City, yeah, every year they're there. It's hard as hell to win the Super Bowl. <laughs> yes. And they're good. Tell folks that. And they're consistent. Yes. And I they're, tell folks that. And, and you just realize, like, they were there and they st- – Still lost. What's it? Four straight NFC or AFC championships. Yeah, and we yeah, but we can't even I, get I, I there. I want to be there. I want right. to be there. Yeah. You do. But, but you there. know what's so amazing? It just made. I, I looked over at my wife, and I said, "Coaches always say it is not how many great plays you make. It's that one bad play where you believe the player as a coach instead of kicking the three and giving that great player that opportunity to yep. make a great play." <laughs> yeah. Jimmy would have kicked it. And it. I promise you. And it's and it's and you realize like you know every every guest we had yeah. on Crosstalk on Wednesday night that we talked about the Super Bowl. Every one of them said it takes a you got to be a little bit lucky to to get yes. to yeah. and win the yes, Super Bowl. You do. And you think about Patrick Mahomes, you're like, oh, he's young. They locked him up for ten years. They're going to be in a lot of Super Bowls. Are they? Like. That window, man, is so... Brady was unique. Yeah. I mean, Brady was he, yeah, unique. And that makes you appreciate yeah. him that much yeah. more. Like him or hate that guy. Yeah. Like, if you, don't, if you don't appreciate him and respect what he did, you just, you can't... You, you don't know, like football. You don't That's need to talk about wife. football. Yeah, yeah. You I told just, my wife to yeah. stop with that. You a, you a bigger hater than me. You're a bigger hater than me. If you don't like and appreciate what Brady did, you're a bigger <laughs> hater than me. And I'm the biggest hater. Yes, we know. We got Jesse, we got to let you go. We got to get our uh, super fan on. Kurt's got a bail, yes. too. Good seeing you, Jess. Good, Good seeing you, Jess. Glad you made it back. We'll, we'll all be, I guess, back together on – we all here Monday? Monday. Yes, Monday. Monday, 1130? All right. Yes. Yeah. Well, me and Nate will be back with our uh, cowboy, super cowboy – uh, Miguel Castellanos, Jesse, good seeing you. <laughs> Kurt, good seeing you. Fellas, we'll be back for one more segment. This is Hanging with the Boys. Meet me some more chicken. Brace yourself for an existential question. Has your butt been having enough fun lately? Have you been treating it well? Has it been going places? If not, then it's about time you start using SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the best way to get your butt tickets to live events. Just ask the thousands of other butts who have rated it the number one ticketing app. So what are you waiting for? Download the app now or visit SeatGeek.com to get tickets to sports, concerts, and live events and make your butt happy. SeatGeek, get your seat in a seat. How great would it be to travel to watch the Cowboys win on another team's turf? Pretty great. But honestly... Just watching the game from anywhere but your house would be fun. Even a hotel bar with some guy named Phil from St. Louis who thinks Oakland still has a team. So whether you're traveling to the game or watching from your favorite vacation spot, book a place to stay on Hotels.com. Proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. At AT AT&T, everyone, new and existing customers, get our best deals on every smartphone. Why? Because you deserve it. For turning your living room into your office and your gym. We're teaching grandma how to video call and teaching her again. It's the button on your left, Nana. Okay, your other left. It's not complicated. Everyone deserves something new. So AT&T has given everyone new and existing customers our best deals with every unlimited plan on every smartphone, even the latest ones. AT&T may temporarily slow data speeds if the network's busy. Restrictions and exceptions may apply. Hey, Cowboys fans, ready to spice up your next watch party? 
Bring Yokiero guacamole and be the game day hero. Yokiero means I want, and we know you want great, fresh tasting, ready to serve guacamole for your home gating and tailgating events. Made with real avocados and the perfect blend of spices, it will be the star of any party. You can find us at your local Albertsons or Tom Thumb in the deli section. If you can't find it, talk to your store manager and tell them, Yokiero, Yokiero guacamole. Back to hanging with the boys. Welcome back to the show. And do we have a treat for you? The Ford Hall of Fans is an official part of of the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton. It's for fans who have been demonstrated outstanding loyalty, passion, and character. And our guest on the show now is known as Super Cowboy. Miguel was nominated to represent the Cowboys as part of the 2022 class of the Ford Hall of Fans. And I hear he is an avid listener and fan of Hanging with the Boys. Is that true or false, Miguel? <laughs> Absolutely true. <laughs> yeah man so good seeing you i see you at every home game you're usually down in the miller light club uh in the same spot and and how did you how did you get tell us a little story of how you got nominated um so i guess somebody that that saw what i was doing in the community and and the fandom that i have um nominated me and ford reached out to me and said they wanted to do an interview at the star um, and also, if I could help out with a toy drive, um, I really didn't know what was going on. Uh, I thought, you know, it was going to be just an interview about maybe getting nominated. And, you know, all of a sudden I see Drew Pearson getting out of this brand new Ford truck. And I'm like, what's going on? Is he donating toys? I'm like, this is awesome. So I was like, hey, Drew, how's it going? And then he says my name and I don't know Drew. So I was like, wait a minute, how does he know my real name? <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was a total surprise to me. Um, you know, when he started telling me that he was there to nominate me for the four of fans, I just started crying. I just couldn't believe I was overwhelmed with, with, you know, such a great honor to even be nominated. You know, it's something that I just can't believe that this happened to me. Hello, my friend. I'm um, just Nate Newton. I have two questions. The first one is tell us your story of how you became the super fan. Um, since I was a kid, I, I grew up in Mexico a little bit. Uh, I was born here, but I grew up in Mexico. So when I came back, it was about 90, 1990. Um, I didn't know anything about football, American football, just soccer. And uh, in 93, uh, I wanted to go to a Super Bowl party, but my mom wouldn't let me go because she said there was going to be drinking and smoking. <laughs> and I was upset about it. And I was like, well, what is this Super Bowl? Because I didn't know what it was. And, uh, you know, 93 is it's Cowboys Bills. And I watched this Super Bowl by myself. They didn't know what was going on. They didn't know the rules or anything. But I was just memorized by the Cowboys and the star in the helmet and the way they won that game, which, you know, Nate was there. So, <laughs> you know, um, it's just from then on, I just I was a Cowboy fan. And, and little by little, as I got older, as I started driving, I started going to all the training camps in Oxnard. Um, you know, I started wearing a mask to games, just a mask and, and a cape. And then little by little, I was like, you know what, if I'm going to wear a mask for my culture, because I'm, I'm Mexican, I'm like, I'm going to do it the right way because luchadors don't take their mask off. They always have their mask on. They actually get buried with their mask, married with their mask. So part of my culture and, and everything that I wear in my jersey and everything that I represent, everything has a little story to it. Um, but that's kind of like, you know, the, the quick version of it, that that's how I started. And, and mostly what I like to do is I like, I do a lot of stuff in the community. Um, I work with the boys and girls club. I do, uh, walks, um, toys for Todd, so stuff like that. So pretty much, you know, I do wear the stuff as a fan, but I also wear it because it opens doors for me to, to get people to help me out in the community. And it's just something that I, that I love to do. Wow, my second question, you already answered it, man, is uh, you remind me of a Mandalorian. You know, you're never going to take your helmet off. So that's pretty cool right there. I like that, man. But uh, I'm going to tell you exactly. like this here, man. Uh, when do we know if you're going to be our guy? When you do, you, we know if you're going to get into the Hall of Fame. The voting uh, will continue until this Sunday, uh, February 6th. And I believe on Monday I would get the phone call either I'm a finalist or not. 
And the cool thing about being a finalist is I actually get to go to the Super Bowl this year. So I'm, I'm just anxious. I can't sleep. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm just uh, ha- having it out there for everybody to vote and going to the website. And and uh, hopefully, you know, if, if it's if God wants it to be and and it's meant to, for me, then it's, it's something just awesome to even be in that in that um, in that building. It's just something that I can't even think of right now. Like, yeah. How great that will be. And everyone needs to go to www.fordhalloffans.com. That's fordhalloffans.com. Vote for Miguel. You can vote once a day from now until Sunday. Miguel, who is your favorite former cowboy and current cowboy? Former cowboy, I want to say uh, Emmett Smith for sure. Um, yes. Right behind here, I have my my jersey. Uh, that's my first Emmett Smith jersey. Um, I still have it. It has a little couple of holes here and there. I actually met him and showed it to him, and and uh, he was he's my my for sure past uh, you know nineties right uh, player. And then current player, um, I just love Dak. You know, a lot of people, you know, have a lot of hate for him, but the character that he has and the way that he presents himself, um, when I've met him a couple of times at training camp, he's just an awesome guy. And, and he has the heart like that, you know, when he broke his ankle and he was trying to get it back together on the field. I mean, that just broke my heart. And, and then from then on, I even liked him even more. Yeah. And Nate, uh, Miguel was out at a uh, training camp when we were doing our thing yeah. out on the stage. I remember and, yeah, I saw him. Yeah, took a couple of pictures with us. So, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, man. So, hey, thank yes. you for joining the show, man. Keep doing what you're doing in the community. Um, go vote for Miguel. www.fordhalloffans.com. Vote once a day from now until Sunday. Anything you want to ask Nate before you before we let you go and in in the I guess this will be our last show till Monday. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, what I want to ask, Mr. Nate, um, what do you think is, is what's missing from, from the, you know, the current teams? I know from the 90s, everybody wanted it. You could tell on the, on the play that, you know, everybody wanted to win. Everybody was all together. And it feels to me like in that playoff game that I was at, it just seemed to me like they were dragging their feet. They just didn't really care what was going on. I mean, I know they get paid and I know they want to play, but it just seemed to me like they, they they were not motivated. They didn't have that heart that, you know, I want to win this game. We You know, we're home. We can't lose. You know what I mean? Physical. You have to have a, a mindset that, I, that there's no way. Somehow, some way, I'm going to turn this into a fist fight. And that's what we did as right. offensive linemen when, we, when I played. You know, you're going to face better teams or better athletes, but somehow, somewhere, you want to make it physical. You want to make every play a challenge. And I don't think that our team came out, especially early in the game, and made every play a physical challenge for the opponent. They kind of got up on us. They kind of brought the physicality to us, and it was over. So what we need to work on in training camp, OTAs, is being physical laying hands on people, uh, not being dumb. And I'm not talking about getting penalties. I ain't talking about spearing. I'm talking about physically finishing plays, physically going one step past the whistle, man, letting guys know that you're here to the end. You hear a lot of teams say, we played to the end. You know, you, you, you saw where Cincinnati played to the end. They did not care, you know. So that, that is the one thing we didn't do against winning programs is we didn't play – to the end. Miguel, Chris has a question right. for you before Absolutely. we let you go. He wants to know if you got married in your outfit. <laughs> no, I did not. I did not get married in my outfit. <laughs> All right. Well, you said you get, you know, they, they do say you said that part of your culture that, you know, get married in it. You, right. You, you get buried in there or whatever. I didn't know if you got married in yours. And no, his wife wasn't going for that, man. How do you feel about that? <laughs> She wanted to see. Yeah, him. exactly. I, I wanted to. I wanted to, but I'm pretty sure the wife was like, "Nope." <laughs> <laughs> I did have my cowboy stuff underneath. <laughs> there you Absolutely. go. Absolutely. Well, thanks, Miguel. Thanks for joining us. Hopefully, we see you back out at training camp in uh, July nice. and August, and then uh, we'll see you on the uh, sidelines. Oh, I have one more question. Oh, one, for one more question. For one me. more question, Miguel. What do you think about the Washington yes, football team being named the Commanders? 
Um, <laughs> all I can say is LOL. Oh. <laughs> L-O-L. Okay, my brother. Thank you. Hi, right, Miguel. Thank, thank you. you, my man. Nate, good seeing <laughs> you. Good, you, good to have Jesse and Kurt back. It. Uh, Chris, thanks for keeping us on the yes, air. Sir, William, Chris. thanks for keeping us William. live streams up. We'll be back Monday, 11.30 a.m., hanging with the boys. See you later, Miguel. Go vote. Vote for Miguel. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!